record, case of State of Ohio v. Michael T. Dixon. Mr. Dixon is here along with the, his attorneys and the prosecution is here. And uh, go ahead, Mr. King. Thank you, sir. The jury is also present. Right before we broke, you were showing us examples of sharp force trauma. And I believe you advised that all of these instances were instances of uh, trauma, sharp force trauma caused by serration. Is that correct? Yes. And you mentioned ridges. Do you see ridges on this image to the right as well? Yes. So there's um, striations. Each of those stri marks, those like lines that are going across the, the bone, um, demonstrate that there was sharp force trauma um, serrated sharp force trauma used to cut this um, this bone. Now, can sharp force trauma specifically serration be caused by just a serrated knife? Sure. Can it also be caused by a power tool that has serration? Yes. Are you able to determine in some instances of whether or not it's caused by a, uh, a blade that's manually maneuvered or a power tool? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So there's um, times when you can um, determine um, the class of tools. So whether it was a specific type of saw or a specific type of um, implement. Okay. So you mentioned class. What does uh, class characteristic relate to? Um, so meaning that um, it... Like this trauma is consistent with um, marks made by a power saw. Um, I cannot say whether or not it was that specific power saw or it was this model or anything like that. I can just say that it's consistent with the marks made by that type of tool. Okay. Did you find sharp force trauma in the bones that you reviewed in this case? I did. Did you find unserrated sharp force trauma? I did. That's the top um, left image. So, um, yes. Unlike um, those examples of the fracturing caused by the heat, um, right, those fractures are warped. They... Um, are like pulling apart at the edges. They, um, or like even that blunt force trauma, it's like traversing through the bone. This has a very smooth um, surface with like very distinct edges along the outside of that fragment, um, which indicates that um, it was sharp force trauma, but not with a serrated implement. Okay, so. Because there's no none of those striae. Okay. But looking at this, are you able to determine confidently that this is sharp force trauma and not blunt force trauma, say just the breaking or smashing of a bone? Yes. Does the fact that these bones were subjected to uh, heat and fire, does that affect your ability to make a determination of it's sharp force trauma or not? Um, whether it's sharp force trauma or not, no. There's been um, significant research looking at, not by me, by like others in the community, looking at um, not only sharp force trauma, but sharp force trauma then uh, exposed to fire and heat. And um, they found that they were still able to determine um, the class of the dis different instruments that they used within that research. So despite the, the thermal heat, uh, alteration that might be affecting this bone, you're still confident that that's sharp force trauma? I am. Now, understanding that you can't say specific, but you can talk about class. Could this knife have caused that sharp force trauma? It's possible. Not. Sorry, that's exhibit EE. -E. Was there also 
sharp force trauma caused by serration in this case? There was the, uh, the other three images are um, images uh, using a stereo microscope to look at the surface of that um, trauma. And what is a stereo microscope? Stereo microscope is also called a dissecting microscope. It allows for lower magnification um, rather than like a traditional microscope where you look at slides. Um, and you can look at a 3D object and turn and look. Um, and so it allows you to zoom in more than just using your, your eyeball um, to get a closer look and then to take images of that magnified sample of whatever you're looking at. So all three of these images on the top right and the bottom row, are these all the serrated sharp force traumas? They are. So they all have those distinct striae that are going across each of the samples. Um, they're like evenly spaced um, and they have like, there's like a ridge and then it goes and then a ridge and then it goes and that's the striae pattern. Do you see, aside from the striate pattern, any commonalities between these three images? Meaning, are you able to determine that it's from the same type of serrated blade? No, I would only feel confident in saying that it's from a serrated blade. Are you able to distinguish whether or not this is caused by a power tool or manually uh, caused by a, a, a serrated blade? Um. No, not in this case. There's been thermal trauma after the um, sharp force trauma, which may or may not alter the comparison of those things. Showing you what's marked as exhibit HH. Is this a serrated blade that could cause that type of striae on the sharp force trauma? Yes, it's possible. I'm now showing you what's marked as II. Bear with me, this was found in a, a burn pit. II is a chain to a chainsaw. If this chain was attached to a bar and then to a chainsaw, would this chain, this serrated chain, be a potential cause for that striae? The uh, chainsaw does cause striae. Um, these, it's hard to say because these were burned, but these are two. Um, defined um, chainsaws are I don't know for better words they tear um, where and they would leave um, like chips um, where it, which is not consistent with these items here um, so with what I observed for the sharp force trauma it would not be consistent with a chainsaw um, but again there's been thermal alterations okay. would it be consistent with another type of power tool that has a serrated teeth? Sure, yes. I think that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Cross. One moment, Your Honor. Certainly. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. So I don't have a whole lot of questions for you. Uh, just very briefly, you talked about the blunt force trauma to the skull fragments, correct? And you said, I'm sorry, I do have to have you verbally. Oh, sorry, yes. Okay, and, and we are being recorded. I, I know you I know you did that. Just have to make sure you do verbally answer, okay? Of course. Um, so you said you have no idea what truly caused those, correct? Correct. And in fact, I think throughout, throughout the question, you've said you can only say what's consistent. You can't say what actually caused any of this trauma, correct? Correct. Um, even even the, I believe, the heat trauma, you don't know whether it was flames or heat or whatever. You just, you don't know, correct? I just know that it's thermal, correct? Correct. So um, you were even asked earlier, I believe, could a uh, bullet or a gun blast or something like that have caused the blunt force trauma? You remember that? I do. 
Okay. And you said it could have, but without seeing exit wound or the full skull, you couldn't say one way or another, correct? Correct. But it is possible, correct? It is possible. Okay. Um, and beyond that, you are not sent any of these exhibits to do any comparisons on the bones, correct? No. Okay. Would that be helpful to you, potentially? In this case, no, um, because there's so few fragmented remains. Um, and they then went through thermal trauma. So I couldn't replicate all parts of that okay. to, to look at it further. So given the sort of thermal trauma there's been, it's really, uh, it would be inconclusive no matter what he held up, whether it could or could not have caused those uh, serrated edge cuts or the other cuts or anything of that nature. As long as it was a serrated implement, it's possible. It's possible. Sure. Okay. Um, and the last question I have is you mentioned that there's those, I think, uh, there's a series of bones with three main bones with a lot of small finger bones, I believe, that were untouched by thermal Correct. damage. Uh, and that is where you located the puncture wounds in the finger from animal, correct? Correct. Animal scavenging. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Be direct. I think just two questions for you. If someone hadn't spent time burning and reburning these bones, uh, would you have been able to tell even more than what you were able to tell us today? Uh, yes, and for several reasons, I suppose. Um, one, if the complete skeleton is available, um, we can tell more about um, the trauma. Um, we could tell more about the sharp force trauma if we had um, both sides of the parts that were um, cut. Um, it's possible that you could take um, measurements of those marks on the bone of the striae and determine like kerf length, and those can relate back to the tooth size um, on so the pointy parts, the serration of the um, saws. Um, that's all um, tool mark analyses that can be done to look at things like that. Sir, the state offers uh, Angela Harden as an expert witness and her opinion as an expert opinion in this case. Mr. Bob, anything? No objection. All right. The Thank court you. will recognize her as an expert. All right. Any further for this witness? Yes, sir. Anything from you on this witness? No follow-up, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. You may stand down. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Approach real quick, please. All right, so that'll conclude our testimony for the day. And so uh, we won't be coming in tomorrow. And certainly uh, we want everybody to enjoy Mother's Day this weekend. So, uh, as I've told you repeatedly, do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not permit anybody to discuss it with you or in your presence. It's your duty not to form or express an opinion on the case until it's finally submitted to you. So uh, have a good weekend. We'll see you back here at uh, 9 o'clock on Monday morning. Thank you very much.